Uh, I always loved to do it, but it wasn't paying money. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't really focus. That's why I focused more on tattooing. Uh-huh. Because it was paying me more. It was paying me quick and instantly. And paying me was more of a, I paying because I loved it. Yeah, I'm doing an interview right now, man. The camera was running, so I'll hit you right back. Before you paint something, is there something you gotta eat or drink or do before? Yeah, man, what I gotta do, I gotta clean up. Completely clean up everything while I'm doing. Like, I gotta listen to some music. I have to cut off my phone. I gotta clean up. I'm talking about wash dishes. Everything has to be completely clean. And then I gotta fuck it up. <laughs> Put shit where it need to be so I can get inspiration. I might lay up tons of books down here. I might be having music playing and the TV gotta be on. I have to see visuals. It don't have to be no sound, but I just gotta see stuff. And um, basically that's it. And then I gotta take my shoes off. I can't paint my shoes on. I started drawing when I was two. I ain't have, you wow. know what I'm saying? You know, two year old walk in the from North Carolina, walk around with shoes on. Cause I know every artist gotta do, regardless of what you yeah. do, you gotta get into your groove. Yeah, like, man. If I'm painting, I might damn near get down on my drawers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's why I don't paint around people. <laughs> but you know, I might be. I got these ragged ass shorts, and if it feel like I don't got nothing on, cause they so cut up and went so worn thin, and they That's just crazy. I had them for about like, since I was in high school. That's crazy. And they just wore up paint on them, and they my shorts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, I feel like I don't got no clothes on, you know what I'm saying? Oh, um, artists I look up to. I love Mike Giant. Artist Mike Giant, he got a company, Rebel 8, out of San Francisco. I like him a lot. And this is one guy, um, Jeremy Fish. I like, I like San Francisco artists. I don't know something about mm-hmm. the, the Bay uh, Area artists. I really love them a lot, man. I just love their creativity. And um, my favorite artist is right now, I like Corey Davis. I mean, not just be biased. That's my point. Though, <laughs> Corey, I don't know. His paintings just inspire me. Mm-hmm. I don't know uh, something about his style. I just, I'm a big fan of Corey, man. That's my favorite. Um, of course, Paper Frank. You know what I'm saying? I just like his youth. You can feel youth in his work. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see how how artwork evolves. The older he get, and the subject matters change. But right now, the emotion he catches is youth emotion, mm-hmm. which a lot of artists at that age can't catch it, and he caught it. Any older cats? Older cats? Yeah. See, he's pretty old. <laughs> uh, no, no. Mike Giant could be older than me. But, um, Charles White, he's not around him. He passed away. I think Bill Cosby owned a large collection of his work. But Charles White was probably my biggest inspiration. Mm-hmm. When I was in third grade, I got in trouble for drawing in class. And so my uh, teacher, who fourth grade, my teacher, Miss Baco, she was like, read a book, read a, do a book, a book report of some of all of them. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know, get my, that's what you gotta do. And so I, uh, I turned out, she, I got turned on. I don't know if she told me to read, read about them. I just went to the library or something, I don't know. But it was this artist, Charles White, and the way he used to draw people was so dope. And he said, back in the day, they called him a graphic artist. Cause mm-hmm. he was just, a real, like his, his pen work was beautiful and he a painter and he knew all mediums of art and it was just dope. So to me personally, like Charles White is like my favorite, favorite artist in the planet Earth. That's what's up, man. Like I love him, man. I love that dude. His work is just beautiful, man. My, and he was way before his time. And it was so strong and just, I don't know, Charles White. 
I want to get a tattoo dedicated to him. You ever get people like perceive your art the wrong way? Yeah, man, I just had somebody do that shit on Instagram yesterday. They called me the devil worshiper. What? Yeah, man, I said my, my artwork was demonic. I said, man, damn, man, it was fucked up. I ain't know, I didn't get upset about it, because so it was more like, man, this generation of young man still don't know what the off means, or still don't know what this means. Yeah, and, yeah. and it was an old drawing I did. I showed a drawing I did almost 12 years ago online, and he broke through it. I did this artwork 12 years ago. Drawing style, I don't even do style, I do it anymore. We draw, you know, past it. Mm -hmm. And then I was showing people with some of my old stuff. God, it was time to do it with the mind. Like, man, my artwork celebrates life with you, you know what I'm saying? Or pain or struggle, you know, which is not nothing to do with the devil. I don't even believe in the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, the artwork is just a flesh of my soul, man. You know, I'm gonna tell you. Like, to me personally, like, artists, when, when people who look at the art and they try to interpret it, it's only one meaning. You know, everybody, like, you know, everybody, like, I can see you this way. Like, no, there's only one way. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like listening to a song and then the motherfucker's like, I take this way. And the dude wrote the song, like, man, no, I didn't mean that. I mm -hmm. meant this. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta correct them. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes I don't like when people make their own meaning up. You know, I don't, you know, I really, I don't hear it. But when I do hear it, it'd be interesting. Yeah, I moved to Atlanta 94. I've seen Atlanta change and grow and do what it's doing now. I was about to say, you've seen the culture mold, man. Man, I've seen amazing shit, man. I ran. I remember the first time I went to before it was the Apache Cafe. It was the Yin Yang Cafe, mm. and the first time I ever went there, I was 19 years old. And the first when I first walked in, it was like three bucks or something to get in. When I walked in, CeeLo was on the stage singing with a Miller Room. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they were singing, look who's peeping through my window. Before the Goody Mob, man, who was singing like the song, you know, Miller Rue's on stage with him, man. Damn. I was like, yo, CeeLo was, so I'm, if I'm 19, CeeLo was probably 18 years old. I moved to Atlanta because of Outkast. What? I mean, Outkast, her and I heard play the ball when it was on the, before it was on the, uh, the album, when it was on uh, the, LA, the, uh, the La Face music album. They had the, the bells on it. The, the Christmas The album. Christmas song, yeah, yeah, the Christmas album. And the players balls and they were like all the players, all the pimps and all that shit. <laughs> and, like, like, and I was on some pimp shit. I'm like, I'm about to go down Atlanta pimp balls. You, know? you ever um, met Outcast? Outcast? Yeah. Shit, that's his folks. Oh, okay, that's yeah, what's up. Man. <laughs> that's what's up. I don't know them personally, no, man. But I mean, so you never met. Friends, you you know, I mean, we'll bump into them, but not no like no what's up. This is we that. But you know, like, <laughs> I remember when Tuki, uh, we was in the warehouse, ran into Andre and Tuki tried to bow him. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, just yeah. like that. Hey, you know. I ran into Andre a couple of times in Tower Records. I used to see Andre in Tower Records all the yeah, time. Yeah, he used to be around. Tower Records. Time. That's what I used to run into him at all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. But not on a personal level. That's like, what's you know, up. Like, that. I was just wondering, because you said that's the no, whole reason but it will, moved No, here. but um, when they were doing ATL, it was losing the studio mm. with Patchwork. So, okay. so it was like seeing them work. I wasn't getting no artist way, but okay. I went with some. I remember when ATL was getting mixed down, man. Yeah. And the main was working in there with the engineer. Oh, he was. Yeah, man. And we was up there. And that shit, we, just being working at Patchwork, we got it. We was there when Goody Mom was recording Soul Food, man. We used to, I used to sit there. We, they used to, I mean, Witch Doctor and uh, CeeLo was young. They go into it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That studio was dope, you yeah. know what I'm saying? That studio, that's when it was on the house, on Hemp Hill Street. But uh, now it's Cypress. Yeah, uh, it was, Cypress. but what's the name? Uh, Tupac came in there and my homeboy was leaving and shit. He was leaving, going to move to Canada. Mm -hmm. Like, man, fuck America, man. He was talking about, they like, I'm going to move to Canada, man. <laughs> For real. He like, man, you know, he like, that's when he was selling mixtapes, too, mm -hmm. with tapes, cassette tapes. Yeah. And T Tupac came in, he like, I heard you leaving, blah, blah. I like, man. And that's how I got in a conversation with him leaving. And I'm like, yo, I asked Pac, can you take a picture of me and him? Because me and my homeboy says he was leaving. <laughs> I was that kind of bitch with Pop. <laughs> but Pop ended up getting tattooed at the tattoo shop that I started in. Oh, Julia really? Tat Julia tattooed ball in the bottom of Tupac's back. Are you serious? Yeah, and that's how West End jumped off. Wow. That's how I got really popular. Yeah. Wow. Julia did balling. Her friend did wow. the cross, and then she did balling. Damn. At the lower back or some shit, man. And that's how West End really jumped off. Then all the bass people came, like uh, L.A. Snow and all, and you know, uh, Raheem, all the folks used to come through there, man. And that's when, like, we started with Atlanta. It was like, a West End was like Atlanta, that Atlanta bass. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Kilo Ali and 
I don't know. It was just it was a different culture then, man. It was all said and done. Um, I hope they say some good shit, but uh, <laughs> I want motherfuckers to understand my ability. That shit, I want to live forever. Like, I want people like, yo, he believed he could live forever. Even with my body gone, they like, this motherfucker live forever. Like, my work's still on, he got my work on. He lived from a tattoo, from a pan, from a sketch, from anything. I want people to know, like, I got a, like, probably one of the largest bodies of work, period, in the world. You know what I'm saying? And I want people to, that's why I want people to know, like, man, they do had study his artwork, his whole artwork till his whole life. You know, why he lived forever. And he gave back as much as he could of himself. I shared as much as I could. I ain't share everything, but I shared as most of my stuff I could. Yeah, <laughs> inspired by the events you see this work up close. The move boy, I didn't come to see because he makes me see the more recent fall away. Mm -hmm. I went to Paris and uh, I seen Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. It was pretty dope. I was like, I ain't never gonna see Mona Lisa, man. I ended up seeing the real Mona Lisa. It was dope. Mm -hmm. And so, it was inspired by that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I said. Right here. This is my yeah. Accept mm -hmm. the joy of woman. You know, to the point where she got nobody to do nothing for, so she got to get herself out. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way in hell. They like, oh my nigga. I, I just couldn't the phantom in my mind that any of these women had a nigga, a man. Yeah. Like who could fall what kind of man could fall in love with a human being with as pretty as she was, they soul was so ugly. You know what I'm saying? The story about it is is, is it was inspired by a friend of mine who overdosed on heroin. Mm -hmm. And um and what it is is that he getting closer to God by taking these drugs, getting closer to death. <laughs> And he was, and a lot of artists, man, will take they want to take it to that level. Like some people want to skydive and get that adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. He want to get close to God as he could, so he can have a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. My dream project, I would love to end my life with this dream project. My goal, my goal, all is to work up. Of course, I want to open up a, as many cities as I can and create as many jobs. My whole goal is jobs and creating jobs for people, man. You know, opportunity and jobs because. Uh, we ain't had that. I mean, like the, the opportunities I did did get, like through patchworks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The opportunities I got, it was because somebody believed in me for even a glimpse of a second, and I had to prove myself the rest of the way. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you got to be thankful for those things, and you got to make sure to re repay that shit back and make sure that cycle goes back, man. You know, I believe that's good karma. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people close doors. I didn't yeah. see people close the doors. I don't want to help nobody and shit. And everybody knows who know me. If I can't help in some way, I'm gonna help in some way. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody know that shit from me. You know what I'm saying? So my goal right now is open up a mini city and just create jobs. But what I wanna do is like some of these old community centers that they don't be doing shit with. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to purchase some old community centers as far after school programs for um for like uh, art programs for kids, you know, like there's a lot of kids, man. You know, projects. You your moms don't have the extra money to buy paint brushes and mm -hmm. that shit costs money, easels and stuff. So you have a place where these kids can come create artwork after school. I don't want to do stuff like that, man. Like I can be an old ass man. I teach these classes and just like it'd be like a, a Maya Bailey School of Art, you know, after school. You know what I'm saying? Program. I'm going through some